Hello, ladies and gentlemen. A warm welcome from ASICON 2019 TV. This is Dr. Major Guru Prasad here, and we have the distinguished privilege of having with us Dr. Santosh John Abraham. Dr. Abraham has been the past president of this prestigious Association of Surgeons of India, and he is currently the director of the Academic Council of the ASI. So, Dr. Abraham, what has been your experience of ASICON 2019? Difficult question to answer, but then I'm part and parcel of the, uh, you, you know, the academic program. It's gone through me. Rather, I am responsible possibly solely for the, the academic content of this meeting. And it has been good going. We have uh, almost filled up every vacancy, maybe less than 0.5% cancellations, but everything that has been noted, to, noted down to me uh, till Monday has been replaced. So it's good going. The, the arrangements have been good, and the organizing committee has done extremely well for making everybody happy. Wonderful, wonderful. So happy to hear that. In fact, uh, as we have continued to talk to different uh, speakers and uh, delegates, uh, we get a very, very positive vibe of the whole uh, uh, ASICON 2019, right from the scientific content to the arrangements. I think it's been great efforts here. So coming to the, the oration that you gave, a very, very important one, which is about delivering quality health care in resource-limited setting, especially from a surgical perspective across SARC. So can you just uh, give us some insights on that, please? Yeah, thank you for asking that question. But then uh, it's very difficult to finish the whole thing in a in, in couple of minutes or three. What I have tried to uh, do in that oration is to, you know, what is resource limitation? Resource limitation could be in terms of financial provision from the GDP to the healthcare delivery, or it could be a resource limitation in terms of professionals available for delivering that care. Now, when it comes to surgical perspectives, we find today a lot of problems within the resource limited countries. Say, for example, how much one should investigate a patient? You know, this is something which has been a, a point of worry. As far as investigation is concerned, I must tell that it's either need to contribute to the diagnosis or alter the management. I don't see any relevance in doing a urine routine or a blood routine in a patient who walks in for a headache. And if it is done, it is paid by somebody. Correct. That payment is by the taxpayer. And when you have that much volume coming in, you are spending money on that. It is an unquantifiable amount which has been spent for no reason and the resources are drained. Yes. It is a, in, the, there is no balance. Absolutely. Maybe coming to the surgical side, you see a lot of ultrasounds being done. Mm -hmm. Though it's an extension of a surgical arm on a clinical note, you don't, you find today ultrasounds being done for diagnosing inguinal hernias. It is not to be done for diagnosis. Maybe you add ultrasound in a situation where you want to rule out a prosthetic issue or some other issue. It's not to be considered as a diagnostic tool. You know, PET scan, what is its relevance in the place of a preoperative setting when there are so many other things? I'm not saying that PET scan is not indicated, but then for doing that for every single diagnosed malignancy on a preoperative pre setting is not justifiable. Like that, if you Take the examples, there are hundreds of areas where we do over-investigation for no reason, and there is this expenditure on, at every point of this. Again, our, our treatment uh, needs to be tailored a little bit on thinking process. When, as a trainee surgical student, any technology is made available, he or she thinks that that is the way to go. But I must tell that People who are in surgical training must read Global Surgery 2030. This is a WHO document, mm -hmm. and India tops number two in the world for death, for want of surgical and anesthetic care. And today, and today we talk about creating more doctors where the disease is rural, and you create doctors and sub-specialize them 
who will be only in the urban areas. This disparity, unless and until we solve, we are in a huge trouble. That's all was my, my Wonderful. oration Wonderful on insights. that. I think uh, these insights, just in this one minute that you gave, itself is so impactful. It carries a great message for all us physicians across the world, not just uh, the Sark nations. Uh, great insights. And uh, what do you think uh, are the challenges for the young surgeons of today? And uh, if you can give us some insights on that. Uh, challenges for the young surgeons, you know, it's, it's a very large topic. Uh, I think on one side they need to accrue technical skills and the technical skills are not learned over one hour or two hours. It's a process of learning continuously till you end your life. More than that, the pressures of the society, pressures of the technology, pressures of the industry, that shall not sway them in taking the decisions on the area of their interest. Very often you find today uh, the students going into, into sub-specialization for the sake of living losing their interest in the subject. This is a malady. Yes. And you have an incongruence between the interest and the reality. And this takes a, you know, a negative impact on the ultimate outcome. You produce a lot of, I would like to, you know, kind of recall the uh, James Bond picture, man with the golden gun. Yeah. And then ultimately he says something and yeah. he says that, at, similar to that, I would sure. say we produce a lot of overqualified, undertrained doctors. And that is going to create a, cre create a lot of problems. Of course, of course. Yes. Now, I think you have a great role to play uh, being the director of the Academic Council for the Association of Surgeons of India, which is one of the oldest bodies uh, in Asia. Now, uh, as the director of this Academic Council, uh, what do you think is the role that this particular uh, office bearership can play in terms of bridging this uh, knowledge gap? And can you use uh, technology as an enabler when it comes to uh, reaching out and ensuring that this knowledge is at least passed on to as many surgeons as possible across India? One such step that we have taken is in uh, ASICON where all the uh, content across all the halls have been recorded and it will be archived on a platform and doctors can view it at their uh, convenience once the conference is over and it will remain there forever. So your thoughts on that please. Uh, ASI's position in uh, transferring knowledge is peculiarly placed. ASI is a body which is not involved in credentialing process, which is not involved in selection process, which is not involved in examination, which is not involved in anything. It was, it is probably had a trade union outlook. And, and and it's only in the last five years that we have changed the, the trade union outlook to possibly a little more academic uh, outlook. Now, our first challenge was to get this academic in order. And where do you get this? This is not a venue for a parallel teaching. We need to convince the teachers to come forward to teaching. Yes. And there are different kinds of teachers, those who are volunteer to be teaching every day. But there are a lot of people who are very knowledgeable, who, would, who are taken a little bit backward step. They would have to be pushed a little bit to come, come forward. Sure. And it was not a platform for parallel learning or parallel teaching. But then we have pretty much standardized the questions and its output. Fantastic. And it's a situation where, though there are lots of improvements that is possible, but then we have created a platform for the students in the country where at different levels they have got competition today. Sure. They come up after different levels to perform their or competitive examination of the platform and sure. today I'm very happy to see that nearly 2,500 delegates attended the teaching session and glued to the seat from 9 o'clock till 6 o'clock which I feel I'm very 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 happy about and and that that's the first step. Yes. 
Maybe on the technical skill side, ASI has rolled out you know, basic surgical skill training program, which is starting from just suturing, bowel anastomosis, yeah. laparoscopic skill accruement, et cetera, et cetera. And sure. the next year, the next president, uh, Dr. Rahu, is planning to have a lot of courses in terms of uh, critical care. Uh, you know, there are lots of courses he is planning, which is, will be open and it's for the students to use it. It's not only the students, the young faculty need to be properly oriented Correct. for the result that we do have a uniform standard of care across the country. So I'm sure that the initiatives taken from the part of the, uh, you know, uh, association will have a long lasting effect in the bringing out the outcome uh, of the young generation. And I also would like to add at this point of time, every time I talk, you also would require a mentor uh, who men need not be an operator. It yeah. could be a philosopher. It could be, you know, uh, somebody whom you can fall upon when you want to cry. Yeah. Uh, even, even that is required because there are times in the life of the surgeon or every day you will have an ups and downs. Yes. And this ups and downs shall not interfere with your personal life. It should not interfere with your professional life. Yes. It should not interfere with your social life. And there should be peers to, which, to whom you, are, you can, you know, confide and you can discuss. Yes. You need to have seniors to advise you, very seniors, teachers, to let you come out of a situation. Yes. Maybe you have, you know, association also to help you in difficult situations. Yes. So this is a combination of, you know, various things. And we will slowly achieve it. I'm sure Fantastic. that we will achieve it. I'm sure, I'm very, very sure under your leadership and all the efforts that are being taken by all the office bearers of uh, ASI, things should certainly, we, we, I'm sure there's a light at the end of the tunnel for sure. Uh, great words of wisdom, Dr. Abraham. Thank you so much for that. Thank you very much. For Thank you so much. For more videos, download the Omnicurus app.